All right, so um, here we go. The recording is on. This is the lecture for Design 350. As you know, you're into the part of the semester where you're just working away, working away, working away, and, um, and applying what you already know. So let's take a look and see what people have chosen. We've got three people doing a community use of property proposal. We have two people doing the Minecraft simulation. We've got one person doing the Winding Oaks landscape plan and two people doing accessory building infill proposals. So I thought today I would work a little bit on um, uh, showing you a potential. This is just like, you know, yours may look like this or may not or whatever, but I chose to do a community use area, and I'm going to say it's a, um, a, a park, or it's an open area of some sort um, that these people can all use for various, they, various things. It could be a community garden. It could be a park. It could be just uh, a cool outdoor garden. Um, uh, when I was a, a kid, I'd go to my grandparents' house. They lived um, near Lake Merritt in Oakland, and there was a place called the Rose Garden. And we'd drive to Oakland, and back then, Highway 80 was barely, barely getting done and there were still some weird little areas so we'd drive all morning we'd get there and the first thing we would do is we'd get out we'd walk through the rose garden and so this could be a rose garden so that's what I'm going to call it just because it harkens back to my childhood this is a community use area that is a beautiful rose garden and so let's take a look at it and see I've made a uh, two small building pads on two slightly smaller lots. They have the advantage of being closer to the Rose Garden. The Rose Garden could also have a public access, which I think would be really nice. And it could have an access off of this main road. So my idea on this, if we zoom in, is that this would be have some sort of a cool little fence around it. It would be a rose garden of some sort. It's This is 1,600 square feet. And this little area over here is 450 square feet. And it's got some sort of a shed because I do happen to know that roses don't just sort of like grow on their own. They take work and they take help. I don't know how to do it. I just know that that's the case. Some of you who are in landscape design may know more about rose gardens than I do. Um, um, but uh, there'd be some sort of a pathway and some beautiful roses. There'd have to be some irrigation. Probably on this edge over here, there would be some sort of a little backflow preventer and the water nozzle and something that controller probably inside this little building now I made a pretty good sized building here it's um, 8 by 16 so that's a fair size little work shed that you can have your tools and have your your equipment and have your controller inside yeah Ben says it's an art I, I truly do think it is. And I'm not even sure. I think roses grow in the uh, in that area okay. I don't think... I think we're actually in a good area for roses, but I'm not positive. It could be some other thing, too. It could be a fern garden um, or something like that. Anyway, so... And what I've done is I've sort of offset it a little bit so that I've moved the road. That shrunk this property. So this property is a little bit small. It's still pretty good. It's not too bad. This is a 1,200-square-foot uh, pad, I think. Maybe not. Let me see how big that pad is. 
and I have no clue what my units are here. So 35 by 35, how big is that, somebody? Does anybody know? I don't know what it is. I don't even know what I did. 35 times 35. Okay, it's 1,200 square feet. This is a 1,200 square foot pad. That's still a pretty big pad, and it's pretty nice. There's a big offset to Winding Way. There's a rose garden. I haven't looked to see what kind of oaks are already here, but this could be a really, really cool place. There's a place to come off here and put your put your um, parking over here under underneath. Um, there's a there's a, um, um, so Benjamin says, yeah, they'll be fine here. There's a builder called Strang, and he was really big in Sacramento and Davis. And he was well known for making carports, his his houses and concrete floors, and very simple design houses. And they were, but but he did well made, simple design, lots of big open slanted ceilings with a big beam, big open areas with concrete floors, and people lo I loved him. Uh, I have friends who lived in Strang. I lived in. Stanley Davis, uh, um, which were the cheapo of all time for our area. But now I look back and I go, oh, my God, they had cedar on the floors. They actually had real two by fours. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so this is uh, uh, 1,200 square foot. This is another 1,200 square foot pad. And it's almost the same size lot. But a little bit bigger. You can see I took an offset here. So these would be my two lots that are probably at the, the lower end of the um, of the of the price range. So I think let's look at twelve hundred twelve hundred times one fifty hundred eighty thousand. So so we might be able to get this in at. 60 or 70 percent of um, the medium for the home. Oh my gosh, your redwood framing. Uh, yeah, and those were quote cheapo houses at one point, right? <laughs> Laura says, yeah, their house has redwood framing. Oh, wouldn't we all just die for that these days? Uh, well, no, because then we'd be cutting down all the redwoods still. Yeah, that would be really expensive these days. Um, but anyway, so we can still do good work on these and still meet our requirements. These two lots get progressively bigger. This lot is just a small amount bigger than this lot because I don't have the, the right-of-way put into it. Um... So, um, so there, so that was, that's an idea. Now, what would you do? So this is re-envisioning it. It's almost the same as what I had. I hadn't looked at where the trees were and everything, because that's your job to do. I do have an ingress and an egress. I've got this community use area that I've called out as a rose garden. And now I got to think about what it takes to support a rose garden. So I need... I need water and I probably need electricity because I'd probably want a lighted pathway. You know, gosh, it's getting dark at like 4.30 right now. So I might want lighted pathway, although you could do solar for the, for the little lights on the pathway. Uh, you're going to need a gated area. And then I have to think about who's going to pay for the maintenance of this because that would take some sort of a professional a real gardener right not a mow and blow this is not a mow and blow gardener gardening service this is a real gardener and although the person who lives here might be a real gardener that person is going to either get sick of it or move or get ill or pass away or sell the joint and now that person isn't there and your beautiful rose garden becomes a dump. And so we don't want that. So you'll have to think about how 
is the upkeep of this going to be done in the CCNRs? And that's actually probably going to be part of your uh, an option for your final exam of how to write it. Uh, you could do some things like um, sell the roses. You could have this as a little shop. Actually, it's big enough that it could be a little open up shop where people can buy roses once a week on Saturdays or something like that to help pay for this. And you, you've got a wonderful uh, floristry department not too far away. Uh, you're doing and wondered if it needed basically redraw everything but keep the original. So um, that's still up to you. So Laura says uh, she's doing a community garden concept and wonder if it needed to basically redraw everything but keep the original trees or re-identify the trees would need to go. So it's sort of up to you. You can sort of, you can see I really just re-envisioned this one little area and you can get rid of all the trees and these ones can stay. It's sort of, um, um, you could always relocate them. I've seen it done before for huge trees, yes. Or you can do a um, replanting. I think there's a, a thing that if you do take down a tree, you can replant some certain multiple of those, four, six, eight, because they know they're not all going to live. Um, so these things exist. I'm not good at them. But those of you who are, you would, you would just write those things into your proposal so that we would know what to do. Um, but when we talk about the sustainability, you've got at American River College nearby um, a great opportunity to hire or make an arrangement to have a student come and, you know, sell stuff. Um, you do not need to do redo the stormwater pollution prevention plan, even though this changes, unless... It's critical, like, if you're going to put in a swale <laughs> or something like that, that, that's part of what you're doing if, if, um, if what you do requires some specific thing, then you would um, want to do it. So, for instance, you might put in a, quote, dry creek bed that is really a vegetated swale for your runoff. Then, of course, you would add it in to your stormwater pollution prevention plan, but it would really be the thing you're doing. Does that make does that make sense, Laura? So no, you do not need to, to redo that. Um, but I do want you to think about sustainability. How is this, this is, it's not easy and cheap to have a rose garden. Um, so how, where is the money gonna come from for that? Um, you could maybe, have uh, a little event stage over here and you could host small little ceremonies and events in your rose garden and charge, you know, 25, 50 bucks. Um, if you don't mind music, you could even have some electrical here so that you could host some little, uh, host the American River College jazz band or swing band or Latin band or choral singers or something like that. So there's a way that you could, if there, if there is a way that you could monetize this area, you want to list those types of things, plan for it. Do you need electricity? Do you need lighting? Um, you could even... Uh, open this up to events. There's a big church next door. I don't know, but how nice if somebody could do a cool little wedding there. There's a place, are you familiar with Bodega Bay? Um, it's been redeveloped now, but they used to have, uh, what was that little dumpy joint right down in the harbor at the bottom of a little hill? Um, dang, I used to go there all the time for for breakfast they made the best breakfasts and it was just like you go right down at the bottom there's a little dumpy part of the harbor and there's a little place right on the wharf and right next to it where there was this little cool garden and it was owned by the um by the restaurant 
And they, they held events there. And they were booked out like a year or two years in advance for weddings at in Bodega Bay. And uh, so, you know, maybe this is a nicer little venue for uh, they've got that church nearby. Maybe you could even put a little gate right here over talk with the church and set this up. So there are tons and tons of things. But that's what I'm talking about, a community use area and making it sustainable. How will you be able to keep paying for this? And could it even bring an income to the rest of this group, right? Is it something that can, you know, bring 50 bucks a month or something like that that helps pay for something? Who knows? Helps pay for the upkeep of this road, as an example. And that's why I put this large shed here. Could even be a little bit larger. I think I made it... Um, Sixteen feet. It's eight by six, sixteen, and you could even. I think there's room, if you wanted to, do a little bit of little bit of extra work. You could even make it eight by twenty or ten by twenty. But eight by sixteen is pretty good. That's not a bad little a little thing to be able to uh, sell flowers out of or something like that. That you you know nice little roses that you grow, your once a month rose thing okay so then of course you have to document it so once you've got the basic property plan then you have to start making a utility plan this would need a utility plan because you'd have to note that you need some sort of either um, foundation for this or something to maintain this little thing and you'd have to have utilities in here at least electricity so that you'd have some light you'd have uh, some power for your controllers, for your irrigation. You definitely need water here. Uh, if you wanted to, you could do a nice little design for a meandering path. You need some, probably need some sort of fencing around this so that it's opened at certain times and closed at certain times. Maybe, maybe not full fencing, but maybe like an opening here. Um, if people are going to be able to access it from this road, probably need some sort of an offset and a place for them to park. If they're going to access it from over at the church, you'd need an agreement with the church. Okay, so if you're going to do 3D visuals, AutoCAD is a little bit harder. I would use SketchUp, Dynascape, or Revit. Personally, I would put this into Revit and do some 3D views of it because you can do some really nice um, shrubs and work in Revit. If you do it in Revit or SketchUp, I think we can let you, uh, I think we can just put it right into a web-based game and you can free walk in it without having to, to do, have Revit. So if you're interested in that, um, I would do Revit or SketchUp and give us about a week. And I think we can put it into the, just like we made the surveying game. Uh, we just, we just pop your design in and away we go. Uh, save the file as a D. No, you would save it as a DXF and import it to Revit. Or just import it as a DWG um, and import it to Revit. But then you still have to build it, right? You have to build the 3D part of it. Um, yet yeah, SketchUp gives very, very nice visual presentations. Natalia suggests that SketchUp does that. And uh, SketchUp, we do have a VR plugin for, but but I don't think uh, I'll have to check with Tristan to see if we have remote access now onto the computer and the design hub so that we can do VR. Um, Revit does really really nice 
um, ability to go right into VR or put it into Unity. I think SketchUp goes into Unity also. But the idea is, is if we can export it as a 3D model into the game engine, Unity, the environment, then we can, we can publish it as that WebGL game just like what you saw in... Um, for the surveyors game, and you just walk around, right? WASD or arrow keys, and you literally just walk around and look around as you wish in it. Um, yeah, so Dynascape goes to SketchUp, but I'm not positive how the textures go um, uh, back and forth. So the big thing is always textures of what, of what we do okay uh, we also I think we use there is a program called Modelo that if you want to you can put it into Modelo and you can use the Google Cardboard and look at it directly so there's a lot of online 3d viewers that work really 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 well but most of them you can't walk around in that's why I like putting it into unity so um, uh, we can we can be looking at that. We need to put a plan report together for the planning part for this. Uh, so yes, so your planning report is it's very very similar, and actually you append it to the Winding Oaks one. So you say here's my Winding Oaks, here's what it is, and then we have. Uh, an appendix, which is a revised plan, which includes a few extra things. So you don't have to remake your fair housing. You don't have to remake your green uh, attestation. You don't even have to remake the, um, the main proposal. You just say, um, we are envisioning a revision. Uh, we are envisioning a community use area also and if we're able to do it, it would look like this. So there's like two extra drawings and a short statement of what you need. You need sort of like this basic drawing. You would want to show from your utility drawing that you had before. You would show that just where you need utilities, right? You would say an electrical, a water, and maybe maybe even a solar panel on top of this thing. I'm not even sure. You might even be able to get a solar panel on there. Um, and then over here, you could just basically write out what you need. Now, once you've got that, you're going to want one more that's a zoom in something like this. that really keys in on your area that you can put notes on, you know, a wrought iron fence, four foot high with spikes and electricity to keep everybody out so that only you get to enjoy the rose garden. Um, you know, the square foot of this, maybe show a pathway, something that indicates what this might look like you can put like you get your home cheapo shed design right over here uh yeah different hydro zones for your irrigation that you've included in your details you know just something cool that shows that you've thought this thing through this part is supposed to be more fun and to add depth and to make the planners go that is really cool i see that and somewhere you have to talk about the sustainability of this. So it can either be a separate document or written onto here that is your sustainability plan. How will you sustain this? That's the biggest thing. There's nothing worse than a cool thing like this that five, six, seven years later, it's a weed patch. Um, people are, are dumping their their used furniture there with free signs. Uh, you don't want that. You want this to stay looking really, really nice and to be 
be really good. Yeah, tense, tense. Um, so so how will you how will you make this sustainable? Is really cool. And since there is a church right next door, you might even put you know the proposal of some sort of an agreement with the church that that could be renewed on some separate thing or that you plan to to um, uh, pursue an agreement with the church so that's that's sort of what that would look like um, it should be fun okay it should be something you're interested in something that you can like really think about and you go and as you're thinking you go oh you know what I really need is and what I really need is and what I really need is and and starts you know getting really really cool um and for me you know the rose garden thing is really cool cuz it makes me think of my childhood which I really liked <laughs> I really I had a great childhood and my you know I loved going to my grandparents place on Lake Merritt it was uh it was on Canal Street uh no uh uh what was the name of the street uh Gene Street. Um, yeah, but don't go overboard. Uh, spend the appropriate amount of time on this thing. Um, but I really, really liked it. And the Rose Garden, you can imagine, I was a kid. Uh, I was probably three or four years old the first time I even remember going there. Uh, I probably, I'm sure I went there before that. Um, but I remember just getting out of the car and dragging my grandparents uh, to the end of the block to the Rose Garden. And I freaking loved going around the little pathways. The roses were bigger than me. And it was just really cool. Um, I will look into how we can um, make the 3D live view. But uh, any kind of 3D work that you do would be good. Uh, even if you just over here on the side post images of examples of what you're shooting for, right? Of what's giving you your concept. So even if over here you've got a 3D visual of somebody's rose garden or somebody's, you know, community vegetable garden or... Um, a little uh, wedding kiosk or something like that. Um, that would be that would be great. And over here, you know, you could have a three D view of somebody's home cheapo thousand dollar barn that you put on the thing. Elevation views are really good. Elevation views of the garden. Something that that makes it more. You know, this is cool, but. Who's really excited about this view, right? Um, not very, not very exciting view so far. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, I'm seeing it in my brain, but other people, uh, this is not very descriptive so far. Okay. Any other? These are good questions. Any other good questions about this? So this is about community use, because I think. Community use had three. Community use of property had three people on it. Oh, good. We got another person on here. Two on accessory buildings, one on that, two on Minecraft. So so that's that's cool. There we go. Um, so so there we go. So let's look at accessory buildings really quickly. Or let me ask first, sorry about that. Are there more questions or comments about this? This is just really, should be fun. Let me see, I'm gonna put up Natalia's, um, yeah, so I'm gonna put up Natalia's, can I, can I post, uh, can I show that, Natalia? I'm assuming that that's why you put that in there. That, um, Yeah, and I can I can put that up for everybody to see. So so this is what this is one that Natalia did, right? And so and it's SketchUp and it's cool and that's using the 
animator from the views, right? So you make a different view of each one and you just make a cool animation of it. So those are really neat. Now you can also export this to Unity and and then Google Susan there could actually walk around. You could you could have your controls and actually walk around and sit under the tree and sit down right there and have your cup of coffee and see what it's really like. Um, so th this is a really nice thing to be able to do. Um, and it's and it's an automatic feature of um, well now it's freaking out it's not doing it anymore. Um, it's an automatic feature of SketchUp where you go, you make a, what's called a scene. And if any of you need to, I can help you do it or Natalia can help you do it. You make a scene and you just create different scenes and then you push the button that says animate and it just ties them all together like that. And it does that really nice um, molding from view to view to view. So those are really cool. Um, and I think, Wasan, you know how to, you've done it with Revit. Have you done it with SketchUp in, um, on our big dog computer, w which we have set back up now. So, Wasan, maybe we'll get you access to it so that you can run. Um, you were using, were you using Unity and the plugin? So you're thinking about doing SketchUp. Is that what we used? Um, yeah, yeah, the yeah the Mars Colony one. What 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 did you? But you used something. You did a bunch of Revit, right? Was that what it was? Um, and then you knew how to set up the VR, but not how to do, not how to just pop it right into. Um, not how to put it into Unity and make it into something. Okay, um, so that's cool. But Tristan knows, and this is a real cool skill that if you can take one of these, and Revit has a plugin now for VR, but of course we don't all have VR right now, but we can put it into um, Unity and just walk around like we did with the... Um, the survey game cool okay well then let's take a look I did another one where I was looking at uh, at infill and I don't know what I've got on here I've got a bunch of stuff that's too heavy let me change though those are on C prop that one doesn't belong on C prop there we go um and so what I did is I envisioned where I, if, if I could put two accessory buildings sort of near each other, how might I do it? Um, it doesn't even have to be like this. This could easily, look like this so that these have a larger distance between them and then put like a gravel path or something this is wide enough for for somebody to have a car now would it be easy to get in and out probably not but could they yeah they probably could i put big offsets all the way around let me make a new come on why won't that make me a new... I'm in a command. That's why it won't make me a new layout. So you can see, you know, I just started doing some real basic, basic type of layout. Um, I don't know what all I have going on there, but you can tell... I got something extra on there. But um, let me freeze that really quick. Yeah, in DT100 we did that. 
with the uh, with the commercial building, right? The the remodel building, uh, and we still have that ability. Believe it or not, we can still do it. It's just instead of doing it in VR, we're going to put it onto your computer, and it's not quite the same. Um, so you can see that, you know, and I, I was just throwing stuff together to give you the idea that if I set aside this area and even put a building pad there and poured concrete, or even if I didn't even pour concrete, but I put pier blocks in and some sort of a deck. You could make that a deck for right now. Um, that you could put two of these right, right, right near each other, have room for a car. And this is, I think I made it. How big did I make that? I made that 400 square feet. That's that's actually bigger than an accessory building needs to be or should be. It could even be smaller than that. I'm just showing some of the sides. And so, you know, you could you could do something like this. Now, would you want those? The reason I moved those apart is do you really want uh, to have an accessory building right next to somebody else? No. I really think that this would be a better way to do it with maybe even a little covered carport like that string thing. It doesn't even need to be a carport. But something that separates these people a little bit from these people or this person from this person. Um, and we still have a fair amount of room. And this is big. This is like 1,600 square feet. You know, we still got 20 foot away. Um, and this is even big. Uh, so, so there's a lot of opportunity for doing this. But what's nice about this? What's nice about this is I can run a utility line right along the back or right along the front. And my utilities are really set up already to get to these. It's very, very simple. Or... I can very easily just say, I'm going to make a very short utility run from this corner of my house over to here, and I can, I can set it up. Um, so, so yeah, so, so you're saying that that's the size you were sort of considering, this layout concept, sort of like this is what you're talking about. Um, and so... You know, a 20-foot run underground with some conduit for, you could put in electricity, um, You could, and you could even set this area aside and just make sure. And look, there's even still a 20-foot setback here. This could easily... move 10 foot in that direction to make it even easier and farther away from here if that's what you felt like doing, okay? Uh, you could do the opposite. You could move these to the back and put this to the front. The idea, though, is that I've paired two of these up and I've thought about it ahead of time. Yeah, you could put a nice little porch on one of these little overhang that's really commonly done you can buy these things pre-built um, there's a company in Woodland that makes them there's a couple of them in West Sacramento there's three or four in Roseville Auburn has a bunch of them um, they, there's these pre-built places all over that for like fifteen twenty thousand dollars you can get a really nice yeah kits Kits also are available, so you don't even have to run it down the road. You can buy a kit. Now, um, my cousin, um, had a, they had this beautiful 100-year-old um, house in the middle of nowhere near the Russian River, um, and a tree fell on it and took out half the house. And they rebuilt it, and while they were rebuilding it, 
they had for the crew, they they put in a very, very nice small little uh, kit unit. And I think it was 16 by 16. Super nice. Cost them, cost them a fair amount of money because they were out in the middle of nowhere and they had to still, you know, uh, get it there and put up the stuff. But the kit houses are actually really nice. There's tons of stuff out there. You can even buy one on Amazon. You can buy a kit house on Amazon. Um, and they're really, really nice. Uh, the place in Woodland that uh, I saw had some just really, really nice ones too. Uh, and I think they were into using cedar siding, real cedar siding. And they were not big. Um, but, you know, the idea is this is an accessory building. And it's really a, a studio. So there's lots of cool stuff you can do here if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, I, I, this, these are even pretty big. I think these ones, how big did I make those again? What did I, how big did I make those? Oh, I did that in the wrong space. That one's huge. That one's uh, what's what's that? Two thousand square feet. Yeah. So these ones are even even big. And remember, a two thousand square foot pad can really be large because you have a second story that you could put on there. Uh, so not everything has to be a single story. Um, other things you could do if you really wanted to to get really cool is you could put these as duplexes and really have some room around the outside, make two-story duplexes and um, make them fairly large. These could be, the two smaller ones could be one-story duplexes. And uh, you just have some CCNRs on a shared lot and things like that. So lots and lots and lots of things that you can still do to take that idea that you had. Uh, but the idea here is that you're going to talk about the utilities and how these two pads, these accessory buildings, either increase the utilities to those or they're sort of owned by the group. So there's another way to do this, by the way. Let me make another one where these are owned by the group. So let me... Let me do another one that's got a totally different concept to it where... That's maybe going that way. This is maybe going this way. And this is an area for four accessory units. Now, that one's pushing it a little bit far. I'm not positive the planning department will go for that because it's not specifically on the lot. And um, you'd have to really look at that accessory dwelling unit thing to see if you could put one, two, three, four units on here. Okay? But the other way to do it, obviously, is you could put one accessory unit here, one accessory unit here. This one, since it's such a long one, makes it a little bit harder to do. Okay, but, but if you had one that was maybe more square, you could easily get three or four lots all around each other and get three of them in here. Okay, so um, one way that you might do that would be to, I'm going to just take this, 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 
this. And this is all just playing around, right? It's um, just thinking things through and playing a little bit to see what, God dang it. I'm having a hard time with my copy command and I don't know why. There we go. So one way that you might think about doing this is to do something. Come on, why will that not go? There we go. re-envision this something more like this and I'm not going to do a really good job on this but I don't know why that's not catching for me where something like that and this becomes your other lot. Now this one's a little bit small here so you've got to do something like that but now you've got a junction of three lots that you could put some accessory buildings on right this lot doesn't doesn't lend itself to it quite as well and some of the more square lots that you had on your midterm exam. But this is the type of thing where you can get some lots coming together where you can get three accessory units all ganged instead of just two. So those are some ideas behind the joint accessory unit idea. I really think that on this lot, something like this or something where you've got these kind of staggered a little bit um, so that these don't have to be quite so close to each other. Play around with that and see what you'd like to do. And then for your visuals, you might even go and look and see what some of those accessory pre-bought accessories might look like, how much they cost, what will it take to put them in. And then you have to redo your utilities because now you've got, essentially, you have to have the utilities for one more person. And I know we went off of the square feet, feet of the entire lot, but I think you want to add some, uh, certainly some electrical and some sanitary drain. Maybe not adding the water, but, but certainly for those. Cool. Any questions on those two facets? We went over, we went over two of them. We went over, uh, let's see, don't need that. We need that. We went over community use. We went over this. Next week, we'll go over the Minecraft simulation a little bit more, but I posted that one. And I think I've given you an, an, an example and uh, Winding Oaks Landscape Plan, we'll look at that next week too. Any questions or more comments? Okay. And that sounds good. I'm going to turn off the uh, the recording.